Hello, uh, we're going to start off today talking about poison ivy, uh, many people's uh, least favorite plant. Scientific name is Toxicodendron radicans, uh, and it's well named. Toxicodendron means the poison tree. Interestingly, poison ivy was originally in the genus Rus, R-H-U-S, with the sumax. But uh, botanists finally uh, had the good sense to remove poison oak, poison ivy, and poison sumac into their own dastardly genus, Toxicodendron. Poison ivy I call the trickster because uh, it, uh, it can be difficult to identify. It's, it's a very, very variable plant in many ways. Uh, uh, it shows us different looks in terms of its habit or growth form. Uh, it's very happy in a number of different types of habitats. Uh, and the leaves also have, uh, can have very, very different looks to them. Uh, first of all, habit or growth form. Poison ivy can exist as a trailing vine just sprawling along the ground, or it can grow as it is right here as a climbing vine, scrambling up over a, a rock wall, growing up a fence, growing up a tree, uh, or it can grow as an erect shrub and uh, totally unself-supported, unsupported. And the, uh, the books typically say that poison ivy, when it's unsupported, it can grow maybe to four or five feet but I've actually seen some down in Rhode Island as high as, high as seven or eight feet tall and totally un, unsupported. Uh, we, we talked about the different habits. In terms of the different habitats or places where poison ivy will grow, uh, it can grow very, very happily in areas of full sun, such as on sand dunes, uh, but it's also very happy in partial shade as well. So sun to at least partial shade. Uh, in terms of moisture, it can grow very happily on the edges of wetlands, very, very moist areas, but it's also happy in dry upland areas as well. So again, we'll see it thrive in a variety of different habitats. In addition, the leaves can be very different as well. There are always three leaves, but sometimes the margins of the leaves will be smooth, sometimes they may be wavy edged, and sometimes they'll have three, four, five very distinctive teeth on them, these little, little projections coming off of them. So very, very different looks depending on the individual plant. When I was growing up, my parents always told me you can recognize poison ivy because it has three shiny green leaves. Well, they got the three right. We can come right over here. The leaves are just emerging and we can see a three leaves, a three-parted leaf. However, obviously these aren't green. When the poison ivy leaves first emerge in the spring, they're red. And when they change color in the autumn, they're typically either red or yellow. So poison ivy leaves are green most of the year, but again, not in the spring and not in the fall, just before they, uh, they fall off. In addition, the leaves can definitely be shiny, but the finish can be dull as well. So that's another variable characteristic shiny leaves or dull. And that's why I like to say that poison ivy is the trickster. Again, we've got variable habits or growth forms, variable habitats, and variable leaf shapes. We may not care too much for poison ivy, but the birds certainly do. Over 60 different species of birds will chow down on the fruits, which are little uh, uh, sort of whitish, milky white uh, fruits that are about the size of BBs very, very popular among the birds. And in fact, there are some people who like poison ivy as well. A, a woman named Anita Sanchez has written a book called In Praise of Poison Ivy, which is a wonderful book. But among other things, she mentions the first uh, European who recorded the existence of, his, uh, of this plant, of poison ivy, in his journal. That individual was John Smith, and John Smith when he was in Jamestown, Virginia, between April of 1607 and October of uh, 1609, mentions poison ivy twice, and here's what he have to, has to say about it. Quote, being touched, the poisoned weed causeth redness, itching, and lastly blisters, unquote. But he then went on to say that the effects of poison ivy, quote, after a while pass away of themselves, 
without further harm, unquote. So uh, poison ivy, a uh, good way to remember, to recognize it uh, when the leaves uh, are out, is it leaves of three, let it be. What do we do in the winter? Because it's just as toxic during the winter as it is during the growing season. Well, if it's growing as a climbing vine as it is right here, it has lots of aerial roots that it uses to hold on to its host. So what I say is hairy rope, don't be a dope. Typically, the larger the vine, the hairier it is. But even on the small ones, like right here, you can actually see the beginnings of these very small little rootlets that it will use again to hold on to its host.